Hello everyone, my name is Elite Trader Kenway and, hang on, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we getting new Pokemon games in a couple of weeks? Yeah, that's right. Pokemon and Scarlet and Violet are less than two weeks away at this point, so I figured right before we all head out and go to the Paladea region, let's all take one final look at the Galar region and talk about some of my favorite things from Pokemon Sword and Shield. Because Pokemon Sword and Shield was surrounded by plenty of controversy leading up to its release in 2019, but I believe that most of that controversy was unwarranted. Come at me if you want, but personally, Pokemon Sword and Shield are some of my absolute favorite games in the franchise. And if you'll allow me, I would like to take one final look at Generation 8 before we move on to Generation 9 and talk about why, in my opinion, Generation 8 was one of the best generations of Pokemon we've ever had. But before we get started, I want you guys to do me a favor. Go down to the comment section of this video and tell me what is your favorite Pokemon that's been introduced in Generation 8. For me, it's a really close race between Hatterene, Loki Toxtricity, and Dragapult, with Dragapult just barely nudging out the other two as my absolute favorite Galarian Pokemon. So go down to the comment section and let me know what your favorite Generation 8 Pokemon is. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about everything I love about Generation 8 and why I'll be revisiting Gen 8 even after Scarlet and Violet's release. First things first, I wanted to say how much I absolutely love that me and my team become part of the opening title screen of Pokemon Sword and Shield after defeating Leon and becoming the champion. One of the things that has always bothered me is that not enough really changes in the other Pokemon titles after you become the champion. I mean, sure, you get access to more areas of the map and more Pokemon to catch, but you're rarely treated any different by the NPCs after becoming champion. Having my team take center stage in the opening title of Sword and Shield and having random passersby call out, there's the champion when I walk past them really makes a world of difference in the post game. Anyway, onto the Pokemon. Sword and Shield introduced so many incredible and unique Pokemon. For long-term viewers of this channel, you know that Kalos is my favorite region, and that's largely due to the fact that most of my favorite Pokemon designs have come from Kalos, like Pyroar, Talonflame, Malamar, Pangaro, and Trevenant, just to name a few. But it wasn't until I began my journey through the Galar region that I found some Pokemon I love as much as I do the ones in Kalos. Inteleon with its super confident snipe shot, Thievul, Loki Toxtricity, Poltegeist, Hatterene, Surfetched, Runeragus, Dragapult, Zamazenta, Zarude, Fun fact, I actually really wanted to use Thievul on my first playthrough team and was highly disappointed when I realized that its moveset was fairly garbage. But nevertheless, Galar was the first region in a long time where I felt I wasn't desperately hunting down old Pokemon to use because it had so many great new Pokemon it introduced. Of my first playthrough of Shield, Charizard was the only old Pokemon I had on my team. The rest were brand new Generation 8 Pokemon. One of the other ideas Game Freak finally brought into the main series is that other kids were finally taking the gym challenge along with you. Now I'm not talking about Blue, May, or Hugh or your other rivals. I'm talking about trainers outside of your story who are also trying to become champion. For the first time in the series, a bunch of other trainers were taking on the gym challenge alongside you. And I don't know, to me, it just makes the world seem more lived in. Call me crazy, but I thought the Team Yell being a parody of Toxic Fans was a pretty funny concept. Although the story itself was pretty bland, Leon was a breath of fresh air as a confident, fun, engaging champion. And the twinge he gets when you beat the unbeatable champion just before he congratulates you was a nice bit of character work for me. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Dynamax or the Wild Area for one reason. There's really nothing I can say that hasn't already been said. The Wild Area was a massive step in the right direction, and Dynamax was just giant kaiju Pokemon, and that's awesome. It's not my favorite battle gimmick, but it was much better than the Z-moves we got in Generation 7. The last thing I'll say about Sword and Shield is this. I really, really prefer the change to DLC over a third premiere version of the game. Having DLC that took players to new areas of the map meant one thing, you didn't have to play through the entire story again just to get to the new content. I was already in the Isle of Armor the day the DLC dropped, and as a father of two young children, I appreciate that I didn't have to waste my time playing through the story mode again. The DLC also gave us a ton of new content, new characters, more new Pokemon, and new forms for old Pokemon. Overall, I would take the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra over Pokemon Gun any day of the week. As with every new Pokemon game, there were things, of course, I didn't like about Sword and Shield, but I really don't like talking about the things that I don't like about Pokemon. I couldn't care less the way the trees looked or about the whole Dexit thing. Honestly, Galar had enough new Pokemon that I barely missed the old Pokemon. To this day, I think Greninja is the only Pokemon I truly miss from the old generations. Right then, on to the next entry in Generation 8, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. 
I got Arceus at the end of Brilliant Diamond to add to my master decks. That's pretty much the only thing I have good to say about BDSP. On to Legends Arceus. Pokemon Legends Arceus was an absolute breath of fresh air for the Pokemon franchise. For the first time in the main series games, Pokemon could attack you directly. We all got to go on this epic journey through the wild, uncivilized world and it genuinely felt like anything could happen at any moment out in the wild of the Hisui region. Cleavor was definitely my favorite new Pokemon added in this game, and oh my god the shiny rates were incredible in Legends Arceus. I've been playing Pokemon for its entire existence, and the only shiny Pokemon I've ever caught outside of Pokemon Go was Red Gyarados in the Lake of Rage. Yeah, 1999 was the first and last time I caught a shiny Pokemon in the mainline games. 23 years later and I almost have an entire box full of shinies in Legends Arceus. I also caught a Pumpkaboo in Pokemon X, but that was after Legends Arceus already came out, so that doesn't count. Legends Arceus has just so many new fun mechanics, characters, and Pokemon that even someone such as myself who doesn't really like the Sinnoh region found it to be one of my favorite Pokemon games in the franchise. I don't think I'll ever get tired of the Hisui region anytime soon. It's just so much fun to ride on the back of Weirdeer and fly on Braviary. Overall, I truly don't understand why Generation 8 and Sword and Shield specifically gets as much hate as it does. The only thing I really didn't like about Sword and Shield was the linear paths and the fixed camera outside the wild area. But other than that, Sword and Shield was an absolute blast to play. Between its characters, features, and new Pokemon, Galar is easily one of my top three favorite regions. Those were the main reasons why Generation 8 is one of my favorite generations of Pokemon and why the Galar region is absolutely within my top three favorite Pokemon regions, just behind Kalos, probably ahead of Kanto actually, honestly. It's probably in my top two. But anyway, don't forget to put your favorite brand new Generation 8 Pokemon in the comment section below. And I will be here next week on Friday the 18th with a brand new video for the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. By the way, here's a fun fact. Did you guys know that of the first seven iterations of the Elite Four, that almost every single member has a Pokemon that can be found in the Paldea region, aside from Bruno, Caitlyn, and Grimsley? I wonder if that's going to play into next week's theory. Come back next week and find out. I hope you guys have a fantastic week this week. I'll be right here next Friday with a brand new Pokemon Scarlet Violet Theory video for launch day. Peace.